Step one, identify the target and its flaws. Always there are flaws. always flaws. I learned that early in life. My okay, so this is the Metasploit framework, which is a hacking framework. It does all kinds of stuff, uh, exploits, scanners, payloads, and it's commonly used by both people on the criminal and non-criminal side of things. I use it a lot. And judging by the code, it, it says Knox Browser RC. So it looks like he's writing a uh, exploit for the Knox Browser, which is a secure web browser written by Samsung that runs on Android. So it looks like he's planning to hack someone through their web browser, which is 100% doable. My first hack, the local library, a vulnerable FTP server and its AS400. The AS400 is a old uh, IBM server and it sounds like his library was running it and he used an uh, FTP exploit for just an old vulnerable FTP server, which is pretty common and 100% correct. Far cry from the Android zero days I'm using to own the FBI standard issue smartphone. Okay, yeah, so he's running an Android zero day for the Knox browser, which is actually the standard issue smartphone for the FBI. That's when I decided to hack you. Hack? I know you run a website called Plato's Voice. Pardon me? You're using Tor networking to keep the servers anonymous. You made it really hard for anyone to see it, but I saw it. The onion rooting protocol, it's not as anonymous as you think it is. Whoever's in control of the exit nodes is also in control of the traffic, which makes me the one in control. So I actually found this scene pretty confusing. Tor is a network used for hiding users on the internet. The way it works is you connect to the Tor network, which is via an entry node. The entry node connects to a midpoint node. The midpoint node connects to an exit node and then the exit node connects to the website. Now each node in the chain only knows the IP address of the previous node and the next node. So what the website sees is it sees the connection from the exit node, but in order to know your real IP address, it would have to trace back from the exit node to the midpoint node to the entry node to you which is very difficult to do. Now, there are two main Tor attacks. The first is if you run the entry node and the exit node, you can see who is connecting to the entry node and then what website they are connecting to, allowing you to basically get their IP address. Now, the second attack is running an exit node. Exit nodes are kind of like VPNs. They connect to the website on your behalf. So whoever runs the exit node can basically man in the middle of your traffic as if they were running your Wi-Fi network. So at that point, then you could replace files with malware, you could inject things onto websites, and you can identify users that way. But the problem with this scene is, is the implication is that Ron is running a hidden website. Now, hidden websites run within the Tor network. The traffic does not have to leave Tor to the internet which means there are no exit nodes. Elliot would not be able to man in the middle of the traffic to Ron's Tor hidden website. Now, the only way I see this scene working is if Elliot didn't find the server directly, because if Ron was using Tor and then using a clearnet email provider or a finance website, then Elliot would have been able to intercept the traffic to that. And then say if uh, Ron bought his server over email, then Elliot would have seen that but finding a hidden website using exit nodes, not possible. We have to assume there was some other stuff in this scene that wasn't explained in order for it to actually make sense.